Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, I'm uh, doing the door panel covers for the T2, and I'll share two good uses for this stuff. Uh, it's dial underlay. It's basically an extruded polystyrene um, underlay that you might put under a hardwood floor. Um, one use, uh, I had to go to great efforts to make these because my original panels were so bad. I'll just show you. These are my originals. And you see these great big areas missing. So it was all guesswork basically. So I want a template, but I don't want to waste expensive materials and I've got to store something heavy and bulky. So I'm using some of this underlay to make a template. Used all the hole positions as well from the original where the clips go in. It's just so that if I ever have to make one, one of these again, it's going to be much, much simpler. Because it was no fun making um, the first one in wood to then cut it up, to adjust it, to make a template, to make the second one, etc, etc, until I got it right. everything and that can be cut out with scissors because it's nice and light and folded up the second use is actually as padding for inside the door panel um, I'm using quite a thin vinyl to cover these, but because of the nature of the clips, you push them through a hole and then they hook over. They um, actually cause lumps and bumps in your panel. So you've either got to use a foam backed vinyl or do what I'm doing and pad the panel. And you can use these underlay panels for that as well. So I've got some uh, impact adhesive. that to one side to dry and I'm just going to put a bit of a hatch pattern on this so it sticks nicely and again leave that to dry go and with that attached take it into the shed and I'll trim off the excess right, so let's just get rid of the biggest amount of the excess first here's the board as a guide and basically like trimming a pie crust trim around and I'm cutting under basically trying to put a chamfer on the foam at about 45 degrees my knife's so sharp I'm cutting the wood as well <laughs> And there we are, one insulated and padded panel ready for trimming. All right, next, spread out your vinyl. 
make sure you've got things the right way up vinyls face out board face out so I can uh, tell where things are going to go it's going to be cut there there the uh, panel off. Put that over. Quick check. Plenty. Then what I like to do this feels pointless, but saves glue. Just mark perimeter. Because that gives me an idea where it needs the majority of the glue to be. Turn a heavy duty adhesive. This is the stuff from B and Q. No, it didn't. This is the stuff from Dunelm. Dunelm, I think, is the pronunciation. Um, and it's got a really good wide fan. So actually, you find yourself using less. So that's done. It's going to spray the same onto the foam now. I'm going to go outside and do that. Back in a moment. After you've used your glue, turn it upside down and spray it until your propellant comes out. Else next time, it'll be blocked. Then after, as soon as the glue's stopped being sticky, um, you can pop this onto that mark out that I did pat it so that the vinyl is attached then flip it over and Smooth it out. There are some wrinkles in this vinyl. It's a case if you get what you pay for. This is uh, quite cheap and cheerful stuff you can get from Dunelm, which is uh, soft furnishings, haberdasherers, if you don't have it where you are. Um, places that do curtains basically would sell you something like this um, but because vinyl is not as a rule their main thing you get you know a choice of a half a dozen pretty standard colors cream and white will be amongst them so that's good as will black but in terms of quality and how much care they've taken with the materials yeah, don't expect too much if you go to an automotive trimmers then obviously you can get top quality stuff but you are going to pay automotive trimmer top quality stuff prices all right as soon as you've done spreading it out and it down well it is contact adhesive so it's not going to get a lot stronger there's no need to wait around flip it over and begin the next step which is stretching it and stapling it start with your longest straight edge decent stapler I've got a Draper number ST2 um, it's not an expensive thing 
uh, I'll put a link in the description. Lots of other makes and models are available, all no doubt pretty good. So don't worry about getting a particular one. And I find if you start in the middle of your longest edge, pull it back and I'm stapling about a centimetre from the edge Oops. and on every hole for a clip and in between every hole for a clip. Oops, safety device came on then. Don't be scared of giving it a good pull. Well, I say that as long as your vinyl has got a linen or what they call scrim back, then give it a good pull. If it's not got a linen or scrim back, then obviously it's just plastic and you're going to stretch it and it might actually pop. But as long as there's a cloth element to it, you're good. So having got that in place, nothing too uh, tidy or neat. <coughs> um, trim so that you leave the holes for the clips. Nice sharp knife, it's worth changing the blade in your knife so you don't end up hacking away at the vinyl. You just touch it and good things happen. There we go. And then because it's buckled up a little bit, you can either have used some more glue, which would be a good idea, or if you've got lots of staples, go for it. I'm using six mil staples and four mil ply, and they don't seem to give me any grief with coming through. It's a combination of the two layers of vinyl and the foam. There's no way anything's going to show. Then you want to do your opposite face. And obviously this has got a curve in it. So where it stops being straight, leave the thickness of the wood and the foam away from the edge and just cut her through like so. And again, round to where it goes straight same situation and then stay in the same distance from the edge of the wood the thickness just divide this curve up this is reasonably gentle curve i'm going to divide it up into one two three four that should be sufficient the other end of here, don't worry about this um, male corner, if that's what the right word, outside radius rather than inside radius, they're easy to deal with. So, pull in the middle again of this straight edge, get a good tug and staple it centimetre or so from the edge. Then I'm going to do this inside rad. So I've got all these tongs, get the middle couple, pull them out, pull them over, good stretch. You should be separating them slightly because of the way the radius goes. And put a staple way away from the edge. Whoops. And make sure you don't run out of staples. Try again. Middle two, good stretch. Staple away from the corner. Same again. They're temporary probably. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Now I've got a hole where I've covered up. So I'm going to cut around that. Oops. 
like so. They've actually gone really nicely. So now, because this cut is come over onto this side, you can, like the rest, just go around centimetre from the edge. Don't put your staples in that way because actually you're only pulling on one single point as a rule. Here you're spreading across two and the flat piece digs in and you get a much better grip because the vinyl's trying to pull this way. All right, let's do another long edge. This microphone's gonna get stapled up if you're not careful. So we've done the long bits. Let's do one of these male or outside corners. So middle of the corner, pull out, pull over, good and firm, and go way away. Like so. Then, halfway between flat and the middle, do the same, pull back, good and firm, like so, just keep manoeuvring it until you pull at the right angle to minimise the amount of creasing. Don't worry about getting rid on this face, just get a nice curve here. Boom. Minimise the creasing. We're in. And last one. There we go. Let me just show you what's happened. We've got a really nice curve there beautifully trimmed, but we do have a lot of excess material on this side. However, all this stuff here, because I've stapled fairly way away, I can get the crease part, flatten it out, like so, and put a staple a centimetre from the edge. Same, creased part, staple, a centimetre from the edge. Creased part. And then, because it's an outside bend, it is under a bit of strain. Give it a really good run of staples so that it's never going to pull out. There we go. Put one more in there, I think. And then, we can take our knife, start with where these wrinkles are, away from a staple, at least five mil, slash it, like so. That takes a lot of the tension out. So there's my wrinkle. There's my wrinkle. A wrinkle. So now I've got a lot less bulk. 
And now I'm gonna follow around and cut to the bases of those slashes. Pull out the temporary, the stuff that was way back here. Use the cloth to pull it out. Okay, you see we've still got a little bit of bulk and it might be we can lose most of those with a little bit more staple work. Just going to get one I can't get rid of to show you. That one. Right, so I've got quite a firm one there. What you're gonna do, put your knife parallel to the surface and literally slice it off like you're shaving it. And A, you've got rid of the bulk, but also what you're doing, you're putting a rounded corner on it, which means it's very unlikely to tear if the staple did let go and it put some tension on it, which it won't. So yeah, you're shaving them, basically. Obviously you're doing this behind the staples. There we go. So, outside corners are like that. Inside corners, you do the sort of star effect like so. You can, if you want to be neat, remove these tags now because they're stapled at the base. There's no need to do this. Just feels nice to leave the back neat. And if like me you're doing this on a T2, make sure you expose all of your trim clip holes. Okay, final thing is apertures. The Winder hole does not want pulling through, that just wants a hole bodged in it and away you go. The others, what you want to do is cut a fancy eye. What do we mean by a fancy eye? Slot down the middle of the longest bit, but with 45 degree lines going towards the corners. but stopping the thickness of your material away. By material I mean the wood and the padding in this case. Longest bit. 45, 45, 45, 45. And even these feels a little excessive, but it's the right thing to do if you don't want to see any raw edges. There we go. And all we do is cut there to there, there, there. If you pull the blade towards a previous cut, 
it doesn't wrinkle up. And now what you've got is flaps that go four ways. In this trimming, and none of this is hypercritical because of flanges on the item, so it go the other side. Uh, this vent, I'm going to fold over and just put a couple of staples in it. There is no point in being really tidy. Nobody will ever see the edges of this hole because there's a vent going through it. So that's purely for my benefit. If I left these loose, it is still all work. Those are too small to do anything with, <coughs> but what I, what I need to achieve is achieved. So, there we are. One trim panel complete, except for the hole for the winder. Let's just make a, a cross. So that I can find it. Now if you're a Volkswagen person, this stage we're doing clips, these are them. This point goes through the metalwork on your car and this hook goes into the holes in your trim panel. So if I pick on this one as an easy one to see, you put your whoops, clip like so push it into the hole you might need a, a tool or like this screwdriver there we go as soon as you can get it pushed down and up oh, they go and the uh, Volkswagen clips basically push as far towards the edge of the panel as you can get them